Okay, here we are at the Biggie. This is the most complex, biggest uh, face-off in the game with the most moving parts. Um, like all of these kind of tutorial walkthroughs, I would highly recommend not watching this if you aren't at this stage of the game or you haven't played this stage of the game yet. This is to kind of help out in orienting yourself with this. And um, I think it helps because again, these uh, this is the one that's most involved. So I'm gonna just kind of read through the rules. There's actually three cards of rules. Uh, if you'll bear with me here, it kind of it, it should go pretty fast. And um, here we go. So the river squid instruction says, Hildegard can only shoot at either the right or left tentacles. If either tentacle is defeated, discard it. The right and left tentacles and the river Najal have separate attacks treated as separate enemies. The steam boat hit meter functions the same way as the Hildegard hit meter. So let's just go over that real quick. So the steamboat meter here is just like the Hildegard meter. What we have going on is Hildegard's on this boat and she is shooting, but River Njal is just too darn big and all she can really damage are the tentacles. So this is the hit meter. She's gonna be going for those two. And that's more or less it for that. And it says, please note block items if acquired may be used on the steamboat hit meter. Now, if you know what a block item is, that's a good thing at this point because you can use it for this encounter. I'm not going to go over how that works right now. Maybe I'll do that in another video. So this is how you lay things out. And then there is a little bonus if you find certain items. I'm not going to go over that either because that's something you can figure out on your own. Now we'll go over the other two portions here. Which one should I do first? We'll do the cannon operator. So during this um, encounter, there's two different things that are happening at the same time. If you're playing one player game, you are taking control of Hildegard and whomever is operating the cannon. In a two player game, it would be Halveg, it would be your second player. In a one player game, it's Madison who's on the boat for you um, during the story, and you're going to take on um, both responsibilities. So let's look at now what the cannon operator does. In a one-player game, you will act as Hildegard and the cannon operator, both with their own sets. In a two-player game, as we mentioned, the two roles will be split up. The operator will roll their loading set with an accuracy of four, then use whatever they can to fill the cannon meter numerically. When the cannon meter is filled, you may immediately roll a firing set at the River Najal. So let's go over that real quick. So Hildegard is shooting at the tentacles, right? That's occurring. At the same time, we have a cannon operator. That cannon operator can load up the cannon and then fire it at the main guy. So we want to do that as quickly as possible. To do that, you're gonna be doing a set just like you would a normal set with Hildegard. So you're gonna do your set with Hildegard, you're gonna shoot, you're gonna fire. Hopefully that's gonna work out. Regular, normal set, hit accuracy of four. Cannon, same thing with a minor little caveat here. So we roll four, I'm gonna just go through the motions. Here it looks like we can fill this one and we don't have any use for these two. And then we could potentially fill, fill that fourth one, but we gotta fill in the blanks in the middle first. It's gotta go in order. So we're gonna roll these two again. We're gonna see that neither of these are gonna help us, but we have to keep one as according to finesse rules, we roll once more. All right, so on this first set, this first cannon loading set, we can only use one. So we're gonna go like this and we're gonna fill that first spot with one. Now I would have hoped to have, you know, loaded the cannon a little bit more efficiently on this turn, but I didn't and that's where um, it is. So let's take a look at a few other things here. Um, well, actually first, let me just note, and the, the, the main difference with this set is that we do not have a wild shot. Now, that's because a wild shot is determining an effect or something that occurs during the shot. We haven't fired anything here. We're just trying to load this thing up. So until we've loaded it up and we fire the actual shot, we're not going to be using the wild shot die. So we're just using the shot dice to do this. Okay, we'll move on. When the cannon meter is filled, you may immediately roll a firing set at the River Najal. This is performed the same way as a regular set. The hit accuracy again is four. The hit accuracy on both Hildegard, the cannon operator is four, and 
both sets, the loading set and the firing set is four. So that should be pretty simple. You're always rolling four. So let's pretend that I, during my cannon operator loading rolls, that we succeeded and we filled it up. We immediately, we don't wait a turn, we don't do anything, we just immediately do our regular set like we would fire throughout the entire game now, but we're using the cannon. So we would roll, and we have this so far. Let me see if I can't get us something. Okay, there we go. So any bullseye works. You can see that this bullseye works on there. So great, we have hit the River Nizal for one. Since these are the only bullseyes that can hurt it, it's really important that we get these in there. We can't use feats of marksmanship and spend them and hit them. Can't spend anything like that. You can only hurt him with the cannon, which includes, of course, the wild shot. So we did this. Unfortunately, we didn't get anything. But had we gotten a bullseye, we would have gotten it. So that's the only way to hurt him, okay? Firing sets inflict uh, mega bullseyes on the River Najal, which we're just denoting with the same thing that we would any bullseye. Only mega, mega bullseyes can wound the River Najal. Okay, so then here's like the little important notes to know. It says the can operator cannot fire at the tentacles. These are too small to hit with the cannon. Hildegard, um, this is too big to hit with her slingshot. Once Hildegard defeats both tentacles, she can help the cannon operator by rolling her sets toward filling the cannon meter. Now this is key. So the whole point here is that we wanna keep Hildegard to get rid of these tentacles. As soon as those are out of the way and they're removed from the board, she can now join up in filling this cannon meter, which should go very quickly once you're working together. You know, if we take a look at this and we roll to do our load up, so there's one there and there's one there. This may not be the greatest example. Oh, here we go. So we got two right there. So that would be Hildegard's roll and then the can opera would roll. So you're basically getting double the loading um, speed, which makes perfect sense because she no longer has to deal with the tentacles. When you don't have to deal with that, now she has a new job, which is she can actually go over and help the cannon operator, okay? So then once it loads up, you don't get two fires on the cannon. That wouldn't, narratively, I don't think that makes sense. And it, it's, you get one shot, you're just helping load it up. So as soon as it's loaded up again, get a fire again, rinse and repeat, and hopefully you'll take this guy down. As we mentioned before, no wild shot is rolled on the loading set, only the firing set. And it says, positive effects in play do not carry over to a firing set. Feats cannot be used in the Bourbon Jal, only the right and left tentacles. So the positive effect in play do not carry over to a firing set. So for example, let's pretend that Hildegard decided to use a feat of marksmanship to um, get hone, which is add a shot dice on the net, on the set. You do that, the cannon operator would get it for the for loading up the cannon. But if the cannon were loaded, that doesn't carry over to the firing set too. It's only you can't use it on everything. It, you know, it's not it's not that easy. Um, and ultimately, that's it for the cannon operator. Okay, so this is the final piece, and then um, we can do a few rounds. So the pressure gauge instructions. It says place a marker cube on the square that coincides with the gauge meter results. So there's a point in the game where you're gonna do something with the pressure gauge and I am going to pretend like we've done it and I'm gonna put it right there. This is your pressure gauge level starting point. During the face-off, Hildegard and the cannon operator may spend any bullseye combination during a set to move the level one square up or down. So this can be moved one square up or down during the sets. Anywhere you want to do it, you can. But um, what you need to know is that on the very top, at the highest point and the lowest point, there's a negative effect that occurs toward um, Hildegard and the cannon operator. So we really you don't want either one of those things to happen. It's, uh, it's not good. Um, Let's see one quick thing here. The The good news is if you have it on tame, it won't affect the cannon loading because that is a, that is no wild shot on the next set. Since they don't roll a wild shot, you know, that's kind of the better place to be. 
Anyhow, so that's how that is. It says if the right tentacle or left tentacle or the ribbon of Jal damage the steamboat by filling a hit square, move the, pre move the pressure gauge level up a square. So every time you get hit, it's gonna move up. So most likely it's gonna be going toward the top all the time. So what you're gonna to wanna to do is if you can get a spare bullseye that you can't use anywhere else, or oftentimes you're just gonna be forced to, you gotta move this pressure gauge down so you don't keep it on this negative effect. Okay, so any status effects applicable occur until the level changes. If it stays up here, Tam's gonna to continue to go. The face-off ends when either the Riven Jean or the Steamboat is defeated. When either occurs, reveal the appropriate card below. So this is the final little thing we'll go over. It's very simple once you know it, but looking at it right now, it's a little intimidating. So here are, this is where the results to this encounter are, this face-off. If we win and the pressure gauge is sitting in green, we're gonna go to card 275. If we win and the card is in the yellow, we're gonna go to 271. If we win, it's in the red, and we've acquired the moment with Madeline, a moment with Madeline, you're gonna go to 273. If you win and it's red and we don't have one of those moments, you're gonna to go to 274. And if you lose, you simply will go to 272. All right, so that is the entirety of the rules. It's, it's, it's a lot to take in at once, but um, I think the fight is, it's, a, it's very, it's exciting and there's a lot going on. And the cool thing is it actually, intuitively works. It, it kind of makes sense. Whereas sometimes with things like this, you kind of have to go with it. Um, anyhow, it's, it's, a, it's a tough fight, not as tough admittedly as um, the bonus fight, if you've looked at that video. But um, I'm gonna leave it at that and then I will do a little um, example of the sets.